Oh yeah. Hey everyone, Nick from Practically Tactical. Thank you for tuning in, I really appreciate it. I have Jesse here with me. What's going on guys? And in today's video, we're bringing you a review of the Duke Defense Red Dot Backup Sight. Uh, we got this when we actually came back to Ohio previously, a couple months ago. I've been carrying this pretty much every single day since then uh, to give you guys an honest review of not only carrying a Red Dot, but how it holds at zero, etc. I think pistol sights are kind of headed to that Red Dot kind of market. So I think uh, this is going to be a pretty viable option out there. We'll talk about this more in a minute, but red dots on pistols, I think we're both fans of them, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, when you get into distance shooting, that's where I really see the benefit. Also, I, you know, I don't have the best eyesight, so being able to pick up that red dot a little bit faster, a little bit better, just for me, I think uh, makes it a lot easier. Yep. So uh, this, again, this is the Duke Defense Backup Sight. Um, the interesting thing about this uh, mount uh, it's dovetailed in. We have an install video, by the way. Go check down below for a link to the install video. Is this comes built in with a back with actual iron sights. Traditionally, what you have to do if you get in, you know, a type of milled or some other type of company that puts RMRs on, is you have to switch to suppressor sights to raise them up over the base of the Trigicon uh, optic. So what this does is it builds it in to the actual uh, base itself. So it gives you a, a smaller type of iron sights, but uh, as we talked about. Uh, in our red dot video, which by the way, go check that out. Uh, it's a reference point. It gives us, it put, it, we can put rounds in that area of that we need to. It's a small sight radius, but again, we'll, we'll test this in the video. It, it's a good reference point. Yeah, definitely. Uh, now these do come black. So I actually customized this and I actually painted the front sight green. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back a little bit. We're going to go do some shooting. going to test this out. going to test out the iron sights that come with this. And then you know what? I think it's time to rough it up a little bit. Yeah, definitely. I mean, to talk a little bit about why this is cool, you know, most of the time if you get an RMR, you've got to mill the slide. you got to either have the, mill, the slide milled or you have to get a gun that's kind of one of those optics ready. Um, unfortunately with those, they don't tend to hold the, hold the, the zero value yeah. very well. It's just a little bit more play because it's, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, the, the, the tolerances are, are very loose, we'll say, generally with the, the optic ready type of, you know, Glocks, M&Ps. Uh, to where that you know, over time of shooting, just because there's different tolerances between the Trigicon optic versus the bases versus the mounting into the slides, that you can have a shift of zero pretty easily. I think most people would actually be surprised about that. Yeah, I mean, each RMR is going to be off, you know, thousands here and there. So when they cut that generic, that's the word I was looking for, is they could cut a generic slide um, or mill a generic place in the slide for it. So again, you're just going to get that little more play. Also, it costs a lot of money. So for something like this, if you're wanting to try out a red dot, this is an awesome option. Yeah. Um, what we'll do is we're, so we're going to go back now. We're going to do a little shooting on this, test out the red dots, uh, have a little talk here, and then we're going to go beat the crap out of this thing. Let's so do it. let's go do it. So we're about 10 yards. What we're going to do is we're going to do a little shooting on the RMR. Got some steel targets set up again. It's just about 10 yards. Just confirming that, you know, this is held zero. Still holding up. What we're gonna do is let's go back a little bit more. Let's test out that it's held our zero at a distance because that's when we really find those uh, point of uh, impact shifts in the actual base itself. All right, guys, so we backed it up to about 25 yards. We're gonna do a little more shooting with the RMRs and then we're gonna test out our iron sights at 25 yards on some quarter size uh, tack strike steel. So here we go. All right, so if I do my job, uh, 
this is definitely held. So what we're, we're going to get up these irons. Again, they're very short sight radius. Um, so the level of accuracy is might not be there. However, again, it's a reference point. Am I putting rounds accurately on target? Absolutely. But let's see what we can do at 25 yards on some quarter inch steel. All right, so initially I'm noticing that I'm shooting high. So let's go ahead here and drop it down a little bit and see what we can do. So basically what I'm doing is I'm dropping uh, my point of aim about six inches with using the iron sights. And yeah, I'm hitting quarter size inch steel at about 25 yards. So inevitably, I think it's going to come up, Jesse, uh, well, the, the base sight, you know, dovetailed in or the mill. Now, I think it's, it's kind of apples and orange-ish for it depends what the goal of the gun is. So maybe you shoot competitions, maybe you rotate different guns. I think the role that this feels is, geared, is geared towards that. Um, obviously, I've carried this for two months plus. It's been totally reliable. It's been great. It's held zero. But, you know, what are your thoughts in regards to uh, a site like this versus mill? Because obviously people are going to ask in the thing about comments and, well, mill that's in, you know, versus something like this. Yeah, I think for durability-wise, mill is definitely the way to go. Obviously, um, you know, these red dots are going under a lot of stress with that action of the slide. So, uh, mill just tends to make the life last a little bit longer of the red dot. Again, you're talking, you're talking a wait time to get it done. You're talking a pretty significant price to get it done. So I think that's where this really fills uh, that kind of role there. Again, I mean, you've carried it, we've beat it up. It's, it's definitely holding. Uh, the other nice part is, yeah, you don't have to get uh, suppressor height sights, you know. It, it leaves everything kind of stock. You can take it off the gun and it's not, you know, completely changing the aspect of the gun. So I think for people that are not big on upgrading everything that you know they like to sell their guns all the time type deal this is a great option um yeah if you want the life expectancy to be last longer you want that i think a little bit better sight picture you know to be able to grab it a little bit faster you're going to want to go mill yeah uh, but again I, and I i think it depends what you want out of the gun yeah if you're ever going to resell the gun or get rid of it i think you're going to want to look at, at at this or you know some other type of solution versus mill uh, and again, too, it's what you want out of the gun. Yeah, if you're going to keep the gun forever, you're going to put the investment into it, go milled. You know what? If you're thinking about switching to red dots, again, check down below for video on that. And you're, you don't want to commit to basically milling that slide. Then I think you look at this because I think that's a great solution to where you're not fully committing. You're not committing the gun to the mill process. No, and I mean, if you're one that kind of changes over those optics, you know, to your rifle and other things, that makes it so you can get it off and actually... Uh, put it on other things. I think, like you said, to test the waters of going into the RMR, because there's a little bit that goes to it. You tend yeah, to find out, you know, in the rain, there's some issues with them. Uh, yeah, I mean, just your sweat and your uh, skin cells off your body, yep. dust, you know? So if, yeah, you want to kind of give it that trial period before you actually commit to milling the slide, again, I think this is an awesome option. Yep. So, all right, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to go up, we're going to shoot uh, our control group at about, I don't know, five, seven yards or so. Then we're going to go destroy this thing. Big shout out to Steve Fisher, Sentinel Concepts, for letting us use this RMR. I'm sorry, Steve. We're going to go beat the crap out of this thing. So, guys, let's go set up our control group and go beat the crap out of this thing. All right, guys, so we're about at seven yards or so. Uh, we, we have a target we shot earlier for a different video. So I'm going to do is in this black triangle, shoot a control group uh, as best that I can, uh, five rounds, and then we're going to go beat it up and then come back and see how it holds. Shot that way too fast, but you know what? We're gonna go with it. Let's go take a look at the target. So it's not my best shooting, but we're gonna go with that right there. You know, two, three inches right there. Obviously I pulled that one pretty big, but so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go rough this guy up. We're gonna come back and then we'll shoot this as our test. Let's go have some fun. All right guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna load the gun here. Take it, visually inspect it. It is empty. So we're going to do our best because, yeah, it's not fun to point guns at people. I don't care what people say on the internet. So what we're going to do, uh, we're on this, you know, 
rock stuff here. Let's drop it a couple times. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, let's take this and drop it right on the back there. Let's take it. Uh, is that even in camera? I don't know if we can go. I'm going to zoom it out here. Okay. All right. So we dropped it a couple times. We're at uh, 15 yards or so. We got just some uh, steel targets, quarter size. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we still got it here. I think we're gonna have to step it up a little bit here. So what I wanna do is I wanna try to drop it on this rear sight back here. Um, that's the, gonna be the closest to the actual mounting area back here in the dovetail. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it, we're gonna drop it right on this rear uh, optic, uh, excuse me, rear iron sight, and uh, see how it holds. And yeah, that's giant gash. Let's do it again. And of course, the grand finale. All right, let's see if we can get a close up here. I don't know if Jesse can zoom in on that. So there it is. Let's blaze it up. Again. All right, so we just dropped it. We're about 12 yards or so. Uh, let's see if we can hit the steel target. Still running, I think we need to step it up a little bit. Okay, so you see Nick drop it a bunch of times. Um, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rack it a bunch of times off of this actual steel target. One of the nice parts about this Duke defense mount is the front side is right in front of the RMR, which actually makes it so that it gives it some protection. So I'm just gonna rack this 10, 15 times off the side of this steel target, and we'll see what we can do. So I racked it hard enough to where the, the target actually fell over. Nick's green paint's coming off the front of it. Let's load it up and uh, see if it's still held zero. All right guys, so I've moved back here. Let's load it up and see what happens. No issues. All right guys, so let's take it up another level here. Again, it's unloaded, verified. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop this, I don't know, from 20 feet up or so. And uh, hey Jeff, are you gonna catch this baseball, right? No? Let's do it one more time. All right, we're gonna drop it again. And I'm gonna try to land it right on this back of the rear optic here. Oh yeah. All right guys, so we just dropped our Glock 19, our drift defense mount. Uh, the sight, the gun, the base is pretty beat up. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to back it up. Uh, for those that come to Alliance, there's the range tower right there. That's at about, uh, I think, 65 yards of the tower. So we're at about 50 yards diagonally uh, from some pistol uh, steel. So what we're going to do, uh, this is half size steel across over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if this base is still holding uh, where it should be. Well, that's me. There we go. There we go. If I'm doing my job, this mount is still holding. Hope I don't rush it. There we go. Let's do just a little more here. We're still holding at 50 yards. I think this mount's doing a damn good job. Still 
All right, guys, so we've dropped it on gravel, we dropped it on cement, we dropped it off the range tower twice. Uh, we were back at 50 yards hitting, so we're gonna go, what we're going to do is go up, we're going to shoot our control group now, just about the same distance, and then we'll show you guys how it looks. All right, I'm on, what I, we shot five already. What I want to shoot is five more and confirm to make sure that it's not any trigger control issue and that to see if this sight shifted or if it's just me pushing them left. All right, guys, so we got our control group up here. This is our control right here. Two here, three right here. Uh, we beat the crap out of the thing. So we have our group right here, and I even put one right here. We actually shot our, our uh, test group twice, just to confirm. Uh, Jesse actually put a few rounds here. So when we're looking at this, I, I feel like it may have shifted slightly. So. Jesse, to me, I might say it shifted a little bit, but there's also the shooter involved in this. For me, does this change anything on the actual, uh, the mount itself? To me, it doesn't. I was at 50 yards. I could still hit the steel targets. To me, that's pretty dang good. I mean, shooting that with irons isn't that bad either. What's kind of your thoughts uh, overall on this? I'm actually surprised at how well it performed. I did not think it would actually hold up um, for what we did to it. But what are your thoughts? No, I think uh, same thing. You know, I'm surprised by how much abuse it took. I mean, you can tell it's been abused, obviously. It doesn't look yeah. like a new thing anymore. But it held up. I mean, are you going to be getting good combat accurate hits on a man-sized target at that? Of course you are. Are you really going to put it through that much abuse beforehand? No. Yeah. Like I said, um, you know, if you're jumping into the red dot market i think this is an awesome awesome option again cost effective and it works i mean that's that's really all yeah again we, we've carried this for over two months now it, it's held up in that regards we brought it out we actually did a, a video not released yet we put 250 rounds through this gun in i don't know 10 15 minutes as fast as we could keep jamming mags and going and held up from those shooting vibrations uh this mount this particular mount has well over a thousand rounds through this gun uh, for your everyday regular stuff, it's held up through it. Carrying it, it's held up. Uh, I think the abuse, I can say, it's held up. I mean, I think if you compared this to other mounts, you could see a shift. I mean, theoretically, this could be the optic, and we wouldn't know it either. And I think, you know, that's another thing is just how well that RMR held up. You yep, know, that it. has been beat up. I've definitely seen some of the more budget options that just could not take abuse like that. I mean, them RMRs are awesome. I definitely want one. And, yeah, I mean, for... The setup gun that I have now, you know, it's all milled to slide. I, you know, it'd be hard for me to get it mine actually milled out at this point. Yeah. I think I would be going with the Duick Defense mount. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been impressed with this. And again, would I, would I, did I expect far worse from beating it up? Absolutely. So, it, and again, in my book, it's it's a way you're you're not committing your gun to it. It's cost effective versus getting a full milled route. I, I actually like this product. I'm surprised. It gives me those iron sights built into it. Which again, when we take it, and it's got those fronts to where if we're going to take it, like we're going to bash it up against a target, one hand manipulations, it's got that front iron sight to actually protect your five, six, seven hundred dollar investment of an R and R, RMR. Again, I, I think this is a very good product. I like it. Duke Defense, obviously, with the name behind it, the quality of products that they make. I think if someone's interested in this product, I think they should go out and buy it. Yeah, I mean, different strokes for different folks. You yep. know, that's the thing is. This isn't the be-all, end-all. Like I said, you know, mill is an option. This is an option. It's what you want to do with your gun. So, uh, yeah, if you're in the market, you don't want to send that slide out, you don't want to pay that money, I think this is a great option. Absolutely. So, guys, again, you can check down below to get more information on the Optic. I'll put a link in it there. If you guys like this video, be sure to like. And of course, subscribe. We've got a bunch more content coming to you guys. So, until next time, take care. Good job, Duke Defense.